Welcome to the Mindset Evolution Podcast, powered by Self-Recoding, world-class consulting and coaching services that you can access at selfrecoding.com. Self-Recoding is a unique blend of neuro-healing modalities that will empower you to reach your full potential. Join thousands of others who have experienced rapid results in their journey of personal growth. Now enjoy our show where we bring you tools for a powerful mind with your hosts, Cassie Tate and Daisy Pup. And hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Mindset Evolution Podcast. I'm Kathy Tate, your host from Down Under with me, as always, Daisy Papp from America. We are bald and blonde and here to give you tools for a powerful mind. Hi, Daisy. Hello, dear Kathy from Down Under, and I so appreciate you introducing us, and I very much like how the intro comes along. I like that it sounds very filled, very essential and filled with value. I appreciate that. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy. I've got a really interesting topic for us to talk about today. It's actually a request from one of our listeners. And I think it's definitely time to speak about this on its own because we've spoken about it with regard to other topics, but we've never actually expanded on this issue on its own. Today, we're going to talk about conditioning. Thank you for that request. I appreciate it. Well, then what would you like to speak about when it comes to conditioning? Well, I want to have a conversation about it, I think, because it's something that most of us go through, whether we realize it or not. And that's not necessarily nefarious. It's a part of our young lives and how we learn from the people around us. And I think different societies or cultures probably have different types of conditioning. I guess it's important, especially if you're unaware of it, because it can have repercussions later in life. Things can pop up and it can turn out that they're because of that conditioning. So to make sense of this, I use myself as an example. One of the big things that my culture was conditioning around when I was young in the 80s was around body image. In the 80s, there was a lot of peer pressure to dress a certain way, to look a certain way. We had very big hair that used lots of hairspray. We had blue eyeshadows and it was an era of kind of experimentation, I think, in pop culture anyway. And I remember being quite influenced by that, but also by the other girls at school being very influenced by what they thought and how they looked. And so I grew up, I believe, under a tremendous amount of body image pressure to look a certain way. Now, because I didn't look a certain way, I struggled with that most of my youth. And I think that's an example of how some societal conditioning can sneak in and affect somebody. Hmm. Well, what I heard you describe, to me, that is not conditioning. To me, conditioning is that it has to do with conditions. To me, it's also in the word. So I condition you to, I tame you or I train you to respond a certain way. You don't think that societal norms can do that? I think they may be related or intertwined. When it comes to conditioning, to me, conditioning is something else. To me, it is when you look at me directly, then I smile at you. When you look away, then I'm very serious. Now, sooner or later, I condition you that for you, it's much better to smile at me if you want it or not, because I condition you to a certain response. That's to me. That sounds like training. Well, condition. Under what conditions? Do I accept you? And that's where it relates to me just a little bit to your example. The peer pressure and the societal norms to me are not directly related to conditioning. To me, it is. Well, I think that's interesting Mm. because to me, they're definitely related. And I think societies can put a whole lot of different pressures on people and expectations on them for certain outcomes. And that to me is a conditioning. 
Now that is more conditioning to me than, for example, that, okay, blue eyeshadow and a specific body image. And then through the peer pressure, you feel now you must follow that. To me, that's not conditioning in a direct form, maybe indirectly, but not directly. I perhaps didn't explain it well enough then because it's not so much about the blue eyeshadow or the big hair or, but for me, it was very much about how a girl growing up in that era, only certain things were acceptable by society. And I had to hide my disease in order to fit in. That societal pressure changed the very way I lived my life. And presented myself. That social norm of a woman only looking a certain way or within a range of ways, I feel like that conditioned me to present a completely unreal version of myself to the world and did that through wearing wigs. So I looked on the outside like everybody else. I feel like I was very conditioned by those social norms and it took me a long time to break free of them. And so not to be argumentative because that's not, not what I'm trying to do, but rather I'm just trying to expand on my example a little bit so you can see what those pressures were. It wasn't really about hair and makeup. It was more about what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And that for me is definitely conditioning. It, it is training a mindset to believe that they do not look acceptable in society. That's what I grew up believing and living with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes it more clear. Yeah, thank you. I just pulled up the word conditioning at Britannica and there it says, Conditioning in physiology, a behavioral process whereby a response becomes more frequent or more predictable in a given environment as a result of reinforcement, with reinforcement typically being a stimulus or a reward for a desired response. Yeah. And my reward to be was to look normal and be accepted by... That's people. why I say to me, that's not direct, indirectly, yes, and related, the conditioning itself. So conditioning mm. is, we all do it, if we like it or not. We do condition people, if we like it or not. And even when we don't want to do it, based on how we show up in the world. I go back to my standards. I'm very clear with my standards. They're not written in stone. They are not negotiable. Nevertheless, I'm very approachable and let's have a conversation about that. And because I have these standards, I'm conditioning humans I work with or I'm in the same environment or we have a project or we do community work or we expand in a different country or with a different desired outcome that we're brainstorming. I'm conditioning others by my behavior because they see my response to, for example, I very much admire when people say what they mean and mean what they say. And I state that. I verbalize that. So I'm reinforcing them that it's appreciated. Hmm? From me, I appreciate it. When people lack punctuality, then I point that out. And I say, I'm saddened that now we have 15 minutes less time than I planned on spending with you. That is conditioning. Now, the good news is that conditioning, again, is like a knife. So I think we can use it to eat delicately and elegantly or cut the cheese in nice slices or carve something beautiful. Or I can go and steal my neighbor's roses with the same knife. Depends on me what I choose it for and what I'm using it for. Now, I think that reinforces to me that it's so important that we as members of the one human family, that we come up with a foundation. Let's say you and I, we wanted to go and play soccer. I, I'm not, dear listeners, I'm not. But let's say Kathy and I imagine us being on a soccer field. <laughs> I can imagine that is a nice image. <laughs> and let's say we would want to play soccer. Now, let's say we played soccer 
in the backyard and now we want to play in a village in their little club. There are specific rules and I can play with them and you can play with them, Kathy, or we are allowed to play with them when we stick to these rules. Now, are we conditioned to accept the rules? Question mark. Well, I think in that example, the rules are the boundaries of the play of the game. Or the ticket to join. Yes. You, you have to agree to them to participate. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't call that conditioning. No, I don't think that's conditioning. I think that's more about a set of rules that you have to agree to to play. So, Okay, but where does that knowledge come from? Isn't it also conditioning that I'm conditioned because there were two occasions, I never played soccer, by the way, this is just an example. Let's say there were two occasions where I was not allowed to play because I didn't respect and honor the rules and I was kicked out. In my opinion, I think it's conditioning at the point where we have been taught and we have learned that games come with rules. And if you want to mm -hmm. participate, you have to abide by them. See, you're giving examples which to me feel like training. For me, uh -huh. conditioning is a step backwards. It's like a, an overview. It, it's instead of being at ground level, let's zoom up into the clouds so we can see more. And that is the level I believe conditioning happens at. We're not even always aware of it. I believe it happens at a societal level, at a community level, at a family level too. But mm -hmm. I think it's quite different from training, which is feels to me like some of the things you're talking about are more training than conditioning. And I might be wrong about this, but to me, conditioning feels like you don't really have a lot of choice in it. it it's happening without you always being completely aware of it and mm -hmm. that it, it's going on in the background Because mm -hmm. it's always been that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I say it's always yes. been that way, it's one of these social sort of, maybe mm -hmm. even a social contract that we've agreed to abide by, but not really knowing whether we can choose not to. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then you get individuals who are very different, uh, maybe perceived as weird or strange, but they're just the ones that are breaking free of conditioning. That's more what it is to me. You know, I could be completely wrong on that, but that's how I feel about the subject. I'm not even sure if there's a right or wrong. I think there are different point of views and I think it is very nice to have conversations about words and their definitions and really what the meaning is. And our listeners may have a very different meaning to the word or define the word conditioning in a different way. I think conditioning to me also has very much to do with education. And now what you relate to as training too. So I can condition you with you being aware of it or not. And I am conditioned. Sometimes I'm aware, sometimes I'm not. And I think it is important that we uncondition ourselves by questioning why we do what we do when we do what we're doing while we're doing it. Yes, yes, I, I definitely think we agree there. <laughs> because many things we're doing because it is conditioned by society from your point of view, Or I think it has a lot to do with the negative consequences or the punitive consequences oftentimes. Yes. And when I go back to your example, I think there was also a punitive consequence because you did not look a certain way and then you felt that as painful or others responded to you or behaved to you in a non-delicate, non-understanding, non-empathetic kind way rather in a cruel way or rude or just ignorant because they didn't know better. Maybe that too. I'm not here to blame anyone or shame anyone. So I think it is a good idea when we do things while we do what we're doing at the time of doing, that we sometimes slow down and ask ourselves, oh, hmm, why is that I'm drinking my espresso with the left hand, although I'm right-handed more? So why is that? And then, ah, now I remember because 
someone told me that there are less people who are left-handed and drink their coffee <laughs> with the left hand and then therefore there's less chance of having previous saliva on it from someone who may, <laughs> may have used the cup before. And seriously, I am drinking my espresso with the left hand. So I hold the cup with the left hand, so I'm drinking. So the question, is it conditioned or is it choice? And I think there is actually where we can come into power. When we question it, we notice it, we acknowledge it, and then I choose it. Or I can choose to put it aside or leave it behind or just discard it and no longer utilize it or practice what I was conditioned to. That makes me think of something quite interesting. It may not be related, but I've heard people say, wash the dishes or brush your teeth with the hand that you don't usually use. Mm, mm, And mm. now I don't know if this is in any way related to conditioning apart from the fact that we're probably conditioned to do it with our right hands because it's our dominant hand. But I've heard them say if you use your opposite hand, your non-dominant hand, it can open something Mm, up mm -hmm. in your brain. So I think that's interesting because what if that applies to everything we've been conditioned about, not just brushing your teeth? What if in the moment you stop yourself and you go, hang on, is this a conditioned response? What am I doing? What am I saying? What if just that very act of questioning the conditioning opens up a whole world to us? Yes, that's possible. I do that sometimes with my clients that they get the homework to step out of the bed and not use the foot that they usually would use or brush their teeth with their non-dominant hand or wear their watch on the opposite arm or the opposite wrist. I do that at times. Now, I wonder if that is conditioning because I remember humans who were educated in schools where it was not proper or appreciated when someone was left-handed and they got beaten with a ruler on their hands painfully so that they would use the right hand. That is conditioning too. They were conditioned to use what was unnatural to them. And therefore, I think it goes back to the punitive response or the reinforcement. Yeah, that's great. Now, when I condition, let's say, a horse, whenever I I make a specific noise or, or speak a specific word, that's also conditioned. It's trained. Now, what I do while I do, when I do what I'm doing, most of the time it's autopilot, so it's not conscious. I think conditioning is a great, helpful utensil when it is used for benevolence, when it is used to empower ourselves, when it is used to support others in their development, in their evolutionary process, on their journey. Hmm? Yeah, I agree. I think For me, the most interesting part of this is being able to look at your life and go, where have I been conditioned? (laughs) What results has that brought me? It was somebody famous, I'm not sure who, that said, if you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, then Einstein. you're nuts. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But I think that's a good point here because to change something, you first need to become aware of it. And so it seems, once again, Daisy, we're coming back to self-inventory of an awareness around have we been conditioned in some way or another and how is that affecting the way we look at our life and the way we perceive it and the way we interact within it. I don't think that you can avoid your childhood conditioning because it becomes a part of you. The way you grow up becomes ingrained in you. But that doesn't mean that we can't ever be a different way either. But like I said, I believe it starts with an awareness and analysis of this conditioning makes me feel this way. I have these beliefs. Do I still want to show up in the world that way? What is it that I believe now? And for me, I started this episode with a story about how I grew up and how I believe society conditioned me to not love myself because I didn't look like everybody else. And over... I'd like to insert here. 
society, if I heard you correctly, that society conditioned you to not love yourself. Yeah. What society conditioned you to, your response was to not love yourself. So no, because I'm actually saying that more directly, it taught me not to love myself. I was the weirdo, the strange kid. I looked like an alien and I was taught that was unacceptable. In the culture where I grew up, that was not acceptable and I had to hide myself. That's teaching me to not love myself. Mm. So I mean it when I say that. Yeah, okay. Maybe I mention a teacher here, someone who I really admire. She is no longer alive in this life. Her name is Marva Collins. And she was revolutionary in what she did. She taught in Chicago in the slums and she opened up her own school in a room up on the second floor in her house. And she taught and educated children that were a minority and totally disadvantaged. Some of them who were tested to have an IQ below 75. And she conditioned these children that she supported them. She empowered them to be self-thinkers. She educated them. Although society would have put them based on welfare, kept them in that societal dynamic where it's not easy to break out from. So that's why I say conditioning is a very powerful and I think even blossoming tool when it's used and utilized for the right reasons in the right direction. And when I say right direction, I mean benevolence in this context. And when we understand that we can choose how we respond to other people's opinions of us and we can uncondition ourselves, which I think you successfully have done, yeah, from whatever conditioning that was or how you perceived it, you unconditioned yourself that you are not identified by other people's opinions, their words or statements or gossip of over you. That's a lovely story, by the way. That's what I was getting to. I wanted to revisit it at the end of the episode after we spoke about this because it, it took me a super long time to do it. And my wish is that me speaking out will help other people do it sooner. I don't want to see anybody hide away themselves for two decades like I did to myself. Now, I mm -hmm. take on the responsibility that I chose that. I chose to give... Well, you didn't know better. Well, I chose to give in to the conditioning because I didn't know better. I didn't know that there could be another way. There was mm -hmm. nobody like me speaking out and leading the way. And that's why I decided to do this because I feel mm -hmm. a responsibility for the people that come after me. And so I think you're right. I think the most powerful thing we can do is positive reinforcement, always. And I think that a lot of the time our world is slanted in the opposite, in, in punitive repercussions for things that we do. But I think we get much better results with a positive reinforcement. And that's how I brought up my child with positive reinforcement and instilling confidence in him as opposed to a parent who might call their child names like stupid or you can't do that or you can see it's a completely different way of conditioning them with positive reinforcement or with negativity so a negativity over here to make them avoid doing something because there's a, a bad result or over here, help them do something and reinforce it positively. I think that one is always going to have a stronger response and I think will take better because I feel like inherently we respond to a positive reinforcement better than we respond to a negative one. Well, I strongly believe that positive reinforcement itself is not enough to create a better world or better quality for us and those who come after us. I think that it's urgently opportune to find a compass when it comes to positive reinforcement as well. When I have a dog and I want it 
to be trained that it will bite the elderly people or the little children or other dogs or other cats. And I give positive reinforcement to a behavior that is not bringing benevolence into this world, then the positive reinforcement will work just the same. And therefore, I think that it's a good idea to, I go back, to have a foundation on specific values we all agree upon are important for humanity. And that is our compass. And that, may that lead us. And then use the positive reinforcement to build a more supportive and inclusive and embracing world for all. Yeah, it would be great to be able to show more people around the world that there's more that unites us and divides us. Mm, Yes. And that's the reason why I put so much work into A5 plus 2 for adults and for teenagers, because I have not yet once received a feedback that the 5 plus 2 is not increasing the quality in the lives of those, no matter which country, continent, age, gender, faith group, culture. Not once have I heard that doesn't work and that does not bring a better quality in their life. And humbly, I think that the 5 plus 2 is universal and may be a compass that many can choose and agree upon and then condition the good stuff and uncondition the old stuff. Mm. Because we also have conditioning, let's say, people who work in the law enforcement or in the military or first responders, they're conditioned that they can act without thinking. They're conditioned. It's instinctive. It's almost on an instinctive level conditioned into them. So therefore, let's do it for the right reasons. And the right reasons I define as they must be benevolent hmm? and not malevolent. That's where it's the road Mm, where there's the fork in the road. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I also think that's worth thinking about because I think too often we go along with stuff because it's always been that way and it's not necessarily the way we want it to continue. Compass. There, I go back then. Let's find a compass and use it to build that foundation. Well, there you have it, people. There's our episode on conditioning. (laughs) It's an interesting one when we don't always agree. But we both respect each other enough to have a conversation and not have to agree. And we want that for everybody, the ability to be able to communicate and not necessarily agree, but be able to see the other person's point of view. I think that's definitely a skill that would make the world better. Yes, and I think we're both learning. Yes, absolutely. 100%. I learn something every recording session. (laughs) Now, listeners out there, please get your hands on the 5 Plus 2 book. You can get them at baldandblonde.live or at daisypap.com. There is a version Daisy has released, especially for kids, teenagers, so easy to read, so helpful. And young adults. Sorry, when I say teenagers, I, I mean young <laughs> adults, but you're right. It is It is so easy to read and understand. Mm. It's like you've pulled the best parts out of the full book and then just put them into terms that anybody can relate to. So I highly recommend this book. Uh, go and grab it. Uh, do yourselves a favour and your children. This is definitely a tool of benevolence that can help mm. the world. So I urge you all to go grab that. It's $14.95. If you can't invest $14.95 in your family, what can I say? That's it from us today. Thank you to selfrecoding.com for their continued support so we can stay on air. Final words, Daisy. Any listener out there who is a school teacher or a principal or works with schools or knows someone who has a school or works at a school or any homeschooling parent, if you want the book for free, contact us at ask at baldandblonde.life and I will make sure that you receive your copy free of charge. That's a wonderful offer. Thank you, Daisy. So there you go. You heard it. If you're a teacher, a homeschooler, somebody who works with children, Daisy would like to gift you a copy of the 5 plus 2 so that you can 
start implementing it in your community. I feel, and I know Daisy feels like this will build stronger communities and it's one mm. of the reasons we want to get it out as far and wide as we can. That's it from us today. We'll see you next week with another episode. We are Bold and Blonde. Mindset Evolution. Talk to you next time. Thank you for listening in to the Bald and Blonde Mindset Evolution podcast. Please share our show with your family and friends. Together, we make this world a better place for you, for us, for future generations. When you need consulting or coaching, visit selfrecoding.com. Also, please remember to rate us five stars and leave a review and support us at baldandblonde.live. Talk to you soon. <laughs>